my name is Kenna Jen. Today I'm bringing a topic on hydrogen bombing with my um, classmates Dallas and Thomas. Um, so to to introduce hydrogen bonding, we want to compare it with hydrogen bonding first. To recap hydrogen bonding, we're using water as our example. So in water molecule, there are two hydrogens attached to an oxygen atom with two two of the two p octals having two lone pairs of electrons. This will result in a partially um, positive electron activity on the hydrogen atom and a partially negative um, activity on the oxygen atom, which is more towards the two p octals here. So when we have another water molecules in the area, these electron positive hydrogens is gonna form an interaction with the electron negativity partial of the water molecule. So this is what we call hydrogen bonding. This intermolecular force is very important that results in a higher melting point of water compared to other molecules that doesn't have hydrogen bonding. And as people know, water has much more dense uh, phase as liquid than solid. And hydrogen bonding is well studied and applied to several applications. As some people might be interested in the DNA structure, the double helix are held together with hydrogen bonding. So hydrogen bonding can be very stabilized in the biological molecules. As I said about hydrogen bonding, so now my Thomas is coming to introduce about hydrogen bonding, which is using similar idea of hydrogen bonding. Right, well hello you guys, my name is Thomas Kerr, and like Kenna said, I'm going to be talking to you guys about the main reason that we all came together here as a group is basically to tell you guys more about halogen bonding. Now halogen bonding is an interaction that is between a halogen and a, another lone pair that is from an atom or a molecule. Now I'm going to be drawing a small diagram right here to describe, to let you guys know how does this halogen bond actually form or come to be. So we start off with basically with a halogen which is X and then it's going to be bonded to A which is A which is a electron withdrawing group, which means that it will want to withdraw all the, not all, but most of the electron density from this chlorine atom, will be used chlorine for example, to the bond and also towards itself. So, picture this for example, so you have the, the electron density of this chlorine is going to be shifting over to this side, towards this atom, and also towards this bond. Now, my partner Dallas will get a little more into detail later on about describing how does this actually form. So what that'll do is when you shift all the electron density over to this side, you're going to cause this chlorine atom to become a little slightly positive, slightly positive. But besides chlorine for halogen bonding, there can also be different other types of halogens that can actually form the halogen bonding. And those are, besides Cl, they are Br and iodine. And the reason why fluorine is not included, even though it's one of the halogens on the periodic table, is that fluorine is really small. It's not really real, it doesn't really have a whole lot of electron density as compared to chlorine, bromide, iodide. And it has been proven that most halogens that form more stronger halogen bonds actually have a greater and bigger density of electrons. Now, we do have that. We have the halogen there. Now, we need to have something that will give it a negative partial charge, which we're going to have with ammonium, which is NH3 with a lone pair of electrons. Now, as we have learned so far in Rob's class, that the lone pair of electrons will actually occupy a whole amount of space of electron density, as you can see right here, which means that these electrons right here will greatly want to be near and very close since they have a partially negative charge, just because they have the two electrons really close right there, they want to come really close to any type of positive, partially positive charge, halogens or ions or any 
hydrogens that are partially positively charged. And that's where you will get this interaction that will happen right here. This non covalent interaction that will happen. And that is where you will call this the halogen bond. And it's very similar to a hydrogen bond. If you take it into a perspective, you have hydrogen that is bonded to an electron withdrawing group. And that also will cause the electron density from the, from the hydrogen to basically shift over towards A, then also over towards the bond, thus causing the hydrogen to become partially positively charged. Still kind of want, wanting to bond with that partially negative charge of lone pair of electrons. So as you can see, hydrogen and halogen bonding are very similar. But you might be thinking, well wait, isn't halogen a lot more bigger in electron density than hydrogen? Why would this form a much more stronger bond, a non-covalent bond, compared to hydrogen, since they are really different in electron density? And that is where my partner Dallas will get more into explanation and elaborate to you guys and help you guys with any of confusion that you have. Hi, I'm Dallas, and I'm going to talk with you guys in a bit more detail about how a partial positive charge can form on a halogen atom. So, in your mind, you probably have this as being the structure of the ClCl molecule, Cl2 molecule. And you probably think that the electron density looks something like that, just a bit more even, obviously. However, what really occurs is a lot of the electron density you expect to be around the chlorines is focused in towards the bond. It's a pretty strong bond. So you have, in reality, electron density that looks kind of like this. It's actually a bit more focused at the bond. In here, you have an extremely low electron dense area, of, uh, an area with extremely low electron density, and there's actually a slight positive charge here just because there's a huge lack of electron density. Now, this allows groups like ammonia, as Thomas has showed you, which have an entire lone pair and an orbital ammonia to come in and donate some of its electron density to this region. Also, important note, this region is referred to as a sigma hole, a hole of some electron um, density loss that you generally wouldn't expect. Now, how we can visualize this using some models is by taking an ammonia molecule with this spring representing its lone pair and this which represents Cl2 and showing that the Cl2's sigma hole is going to attract this lone pair, form a intermolecular sort of bond with it. It's not a true chemical bond, but it is a strong it is a strong bond, a 180 degree bond, and um, share some of its electron density, some of the ammonia's electron density with the chlorine. Like hydrogen bonding, halogen bonding can also raise the density of um, solutions where halogen bonding is present. So you look at water and its density is a bit higher than you generally expect until you consider hydrogen bonding. Similarly, hydrogen bonding allows for the um, raised melting point and boiling point of many substances where it's present. Halogen bonding is similar. It raises the melting point and boiling points of substances where it is present.